Hi there, and welcome to part one of eight regarding ODS Officer Development School. I'm going to give you guys a little bit of tidbits and tricks. Um, some of it was mentioned in my previous video, which was just literally overall ODS tips and tricks, but this time we're going to talk about specifics. Today we're looking at the grooming standards of Officer Development School. Now, if you've already been in the Navy for a while, you might think that you know the grooming standards, but it's it's a little bit different. I think it's so that they can kind of rock you up a bit and like really get you on edge. Go ahead and sit down and if you're new here, welcome. If you join the Navy, we're proud to call you shipmates soon. And here we go. The required uniforms that you will need to have while you're there will be your dress blues or your dress whites, depending on the time of the year. They usually switch around April and October. They wear the dress whites during the summer. They wear dress blues during the winter. You will have the opportunity to purchase both sets while you are there, but for the most part, you're going to be wearing your khakis, which is here. <laughs> you will not have very many opportunities to wash your khakis while you're there, so definitely make sure that you at least have two or three sets. Um, if you are a female, make sure that you also have the male tucked in blouse as along with the female blouse that goes over your trousers because when you first get there, they're going to expect you to have it tucked in, and that is kind of a method to make sure that when you do your khaki inspection, everyone has the opportunity to fail because of the lovely gig line. For anyone that does not know what a gig line is, it's when the line of your shirt matches up with the line of your belt, which matches up with the line of your pants. I thought I had mine, I checked it right before, but just shifting from attention to saluting and all that stuff, it, it totally wrecked it. I don't think anyone passes gig line. So just expect to fail that point. The final uniform that you'll be wearing is your PT gear. So while you are there, you will not be wearing your camouflage. Um, you will have the opportunity to purchase your Type 3 camouflage, but you will not be wearing it. So don't bother about bringing it with you. Don't bring your boots with you. For the first week while you're there, you'll be wearing your PT gear. When you're wearing it, you're going to be wearing your yellow navy shirt, your blue navy shorts, and your sweats. Unless it's summertime, then you're probably not going to be wearing your sweats. But if you're going during the winter, I highly recommend making sure that you have a nice fluffy pair of sweats. And it's not just like your choice of sweats, it's Navy sweats. If you are already in the Navy and you have that really awesome old school yellow logo, you know what I'm talking about, PT sweats, you can bring them. They will still let you wear it. You will stand out like a sore thumb, but it will be fine. Otherwise, you can purchase the new ones, which have the silver Navy across it. When wearing your PT gear there, you always have to have your yellow shirt tucked in. So make sure that you are never caught without your yellow shirt tucked in. I will talk about that in a later installment. And if they're like my teaching team when I was there, they will not let you mix and match. You will not be able to wear your sweat top with shorts or your sweat bottoms with a shirt. Like it's totally up to your teaching team. They will decide how they want to go through with it. Just make sure that you listen to whatever they say. If they say sweats on, put on your sweats. If you're sweaty, just <laughs> deal with it. <laughs> Don't be the individual when you're at ODS. That sounded so wrong, but just just don't. Just stick with everyone else. Make sure everyone's uniform. It's really important. So besides wearing PT gear for the first week after that, you're going to be wearing your khakis basically for the rest of the time. Even when you're on Liberty, you will still be wearing your khakis. Just make sure that you are prepared if you are a female to wear both the male and the female versions. And if you're a male, I'm really sorry that you don't get our awesome female version. For your PT gear, you will be working out between four and five times a week, and if you end up on FEB, which we will discuss later, you will also need to make sure that you are ready to work out up to ten times a week plus weekends. The weekends are usually on your own though, so that's kind of on the honor system. So just make sure that you have at least three sets of PT gear, three sets of shorts, three sets of shirts, and that way you can wash them. So you make sure you're not putting all of your laundry detergent into it and like using it all up in one week. So when you graduate, you're going to be wearing medals. It's really important that you already have your medals already. I don't believe they mentioned it on the required list, and so I showed up without them and had to order them offline. There's a couple of reputable sources for buying pre-made medals. The you can check them out in the link below. And you also need to make sure that you have your ribbons. Now, obviously, if you're a new Ascension, you will have neither of these, so don't worry about it. They will let you know what you need when you get there. But if you're coming in from prior service, make sure you have your medals, make sure you have your ribbons, and make sure that you have any warfare devices that you've earned. You wanna look bling bling. The most shocking part for me when I was there was that in the Navy, when you're in PT gear, and I, I suppose now it's a commander's choice, a commanding officer's choice, 
whether or not you can wear your hair in a ponytail when you're in PT gear. I thought it was just overall okay, but apparently not. So when you are at ODS, they require your hair to be in a bun 24-7. You will lose a lot of hair while you're there. Now, it doesn't have to be like that crazy, tight, slicked back, marine style hair that you are probably very familiar with. It can be a loose bun. It can have a couple flyaways. Make it look a little bit professional. <laughs> at least don't let giant chunks be falling out. We had one girl who would start with a bun at the beginning of PT and by the end, it would just be this braid just flowing down her back. Don't let it happen. Make sure it's well fastened. When you are putting your hair up, you can use up to two barrettes, but you can use as many bobby pins as you want. So don't let anyone else tell you anything else. Unless it's your teaching team, then just listen to them. The only time that you can have your hair down is when you are inside of your stateroom. And when you're in there, the door has to be closed for you to have your hair down. If you are caught with your hair down, it will be massive trouble. And the only time your door can be closed is between 10 p.m. or 2200. And when you wake up the next morning. Other than that, your stateroom needs to be open and presentable and clean, which we will talk about in a later installment. You can also obviously have your hair down when you're inside of the head, which is the bathroom for any of our new ascensions. And that's when you're showering or you're putting it up. But as soon as you step outside of the head, as soon as you step outside of your stateroom, you need to have your hair in a bun. Do not show up with it down. Do not show up with it in a ponytail. I know it sucks. I went through it. It really, really sucks. But it's five weeks. You can do it. And you're going to get a lot of people in trouble if you don't. So I know. Wouldn't it be nice if we could just all shave our heads like men? Tell you about that. There is a length limit on men's hair. When you arrive, make sure that your hair is no longer than four inches in length. Which honestly, I wouldn't even like push it. But the... Longest it can be is four inches in length, two inches in bulk. And when you get there, they are gonna shave right around your ear. So you can't, you have to make sure that none of the hair is touching your ear and they'll be touching the back of your neck. So basically where your hairline is and down, shave. Um, this is because your hair is not supposed to be able to touch your collar. And even like the little pricklies that come out and those two little triangles on the back of your neck, those count. So just make sure that your neck is clean shaven, make sure that your ear is clean shaven. The haircuts there are not the best and honestly, they're overpriced. So just make sure that you are ready to go before you show up and that way you can just kind of max out that ride time. One of the biggest things that my class kept getting in trouble with was wearing shower shoes or what would be known as flip flops outside of the shower. That is a big no-go. Just don't wear flip-flops or shower shoes unless you are going to the head or you are coming back from the head. Do not wear shower shoes. In fact, I would go so far as just to change in the bathroom from tennis shoes and then when you're leaving, change back into tennis shoes. A lot of people got in a lot of trouble from wearing shower shoes and their eyes and they will find you and you will get everyone in trouble. So just Make sure you follow that rule. I know it seems stupid and it seems minimal, but it's really important that you start now and you recognize that you have to be part of one team before you get there. Otherwise, everyone's just gonna be all jacked up and it's gonna be terrible. Set your team up for success. While you are there, you will also be doing two uniform inspections. One will be your khaki inspection, which I mentioned earlier, which will have the gig line. I'm sorry, you'll also be answering three questions, three knowledge-based questions while you're there that range from rank and recognition to the Sailor's Creed, some other information which will be linked down below. And just practice for it, practice saluting. Make sure that your hand is down like this and it's generally in this vicinity. If I had a cover, I'd show you. It's going to be about right here for your, uh, your khaki cover, about out here for your combo cover. And those are the only two covers. You do not salute when you are in PT gear. You are not the army. Do not salute when you're in PT gear. Do not salute when you're a civilian. It's not how things are done. You are in the Navy. Welcome. Your final uniform inspection will happen about two weeks. One to two weeks before you finally leave is going to be your dress uniform inspection. Once again, whites in the summer, blues in the winter. For that one, you will also have to answer the knowledge-based questions, but they're going to have you standing outside of your room. And you'll be standing at either attention or parade rest, and it's going to hurt, but you're just going to have to deal with it. But we'll talk about more about that in the military bearing installment. During that uniform inspection will be your room inspection, which will also be another installment. 
My last little tidbit for you guys, this is something that I've been working on since going to boot camp back in 2010. I'm old. Um, I know I'm not actually that old, but seeing all these young people coming in, I've, I'm starting to feel it. Everyone always wonders how to get the best shine on their boots, so today I'm going to teach you how I was taught ODS to shine my boots and how I continue to shine my boots except for, for this video, which I did not shine my boots ahead of time because I wanted to make sure that they were in the roughest shape possible in order for you guys to see what benefit the shining has. And shining isn't just about making it look presentable, it's also to make sure that your investment in these very, very expensive boots will help them last for a really long time. Which, by the way, it's important to know that if you are a new Ascension, you will be spending anywhere between two and $4,000 on your new, new uniforms. They will give you a military star card while you're there, but it is due back before you leave, so it's really not that helpful. But it does give you a discount, so just make sure that you kind of explore your options. They'll explain it to you in a very sales format when you arrive there. But until then, just kind of See if you can save up some money for it. For this demonstration, I'm gonna be using my boot. I know you're supposed to be using your shoes only in ODS, but I like my boot. So, and it needs a little bit of help. So it might already look shiny, and that is my fault because I did shine it within the last month. Um, if you shine it this way, it will stay shiny for a while. But if you shine it for about three minutes every night per boot, then you're gonna have fantastic looking boots. That's actually one of the big things in the Navy. So for this, you are going to have your water wax. You're gonna dip it in there just a little bit. You're gonna go one, two, three. I like to go four, especially on my first time. Um, some people like to do five, but the average is three, just so you know. So we're gonna get that off camera. And when you do it, you're just gonna go in little circles like this. You're just gonna cover your whole boot in this wax. And the first time you do this, you're probably gonna need about 15 layers of wax. Um, it seems like a lot, but it's actually extremely methodical. It's very relaxing, especially at the end of the day. And having your boots and shoes being shinier than everyone else, this kind of gives you a sense of pride. While the option when you get out to the fleet is to have suede boots, which I do believe is also up to the commanding officer's discretion, um, leather's kind of the way to go. It looks nice, it makes you stand out. There was one time that my boots were really, really shiny when I was just a fresh E5. And my chief actually pulled me out of the division and brought me up front and said, look at her boots, <laughs> they're really shiny. Look at that, that's insane. Her uniform looks so spanking great. And then he proceeded to give me 24 hour liberty. Now, of course, you shouldn't just do this because you want the liberty, but hey, it's a perk. Also, because you're going to ODS, that means you're going to be the officer. Um, more than likely, you're not going to be in charge of anyone that's enlisted, um, at least not administratively. But just in case you are, it's always good to make sure that you look good and that you're presentable and your boots are shiny. That's a navy thing. We just like shiny boots. And we also like to only do the toe of our boots. I don't know why. If you do the whole boot, you're just an overachiever, but everyone will be amazed. As you can already tell, that already looks significantly better. That was just one layer. Whenever I come back and redo it, I always do about five layers. So you guys are stuck with me for a little bit. Now you guys will notice that I put water inside of the lid of my thing. I highly recommend that you do not do this, especially if you do not take the time to dry it. I have lost many a wax cans this way because they rust very quickly. So after this, I will be drying it immensely and then probably letting it air dry for a little bit, but not too long because the wax will crack. And what good is cracked wax? Okay, so this is only two layers in. Um, so with this, you can see it's a very shiny thing. Make sure that you still black in this part of your boot. Um, all the regs really requires you to do is to make sure that your shoes are black and you don't actually have to shine them. It just looks good, like I mentioned. Um, we only usually do the toe, and that's something that I have received a lot of backlash for from our other services, but go Navy. 
And the best kind of shoe shine is the one that you can see yourself in. I don't know what you can see in this. And this is only two layers. So imagine how great it would look after about 10. And as you saw, it didn't take that long. Well, you saw fast forwarded, but I assure you it did not take too long. And usually how you can tell that your boot is ready to go is that you can see your reflection in it. So this is after only two layers and you can see my phone. Isn't that incredible? It's like a mirror. So, but like I said before, when you do your first round, it's gonna take you about 15 to 20 rounds of wax, but it's methodical, it's nice. And when you're somewhere as hectic as ODS, it just, it's nice. So go ahead and start practicing before you go, get ready to handle it. And it's gonna look great on your uniform inspections. Please don't forget to comment down below. If you guys have any questions, feel free to ask. Please don't forget to subscribe to catch the other installments of ODS or just to see me and my wife being fun. We have an Instagram, Jess and Jackie, if you want to follow us there to see us trying weird Japanese snacks, living everyday life. Thank you for checking out this installment of ODS part one of eight. And we hope to see you in the next one.